fantastic. Awesome Thank video, you, man. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. Good to be here. Good oh. to meet you. Good to meet you guys. It's really awesome to have you, man. And uh, congratulations on the record, man. Thank Two you days. very much. Two, two days. days after it, three years. It's about, about three years, yeah. About three years, right? So now two days away. And then I'm, that's Saturday I retire after that's this. It, it's it, over. That's it. That's it's the done. <laughs> exactly. That's the peak. It hits and then just walk away. <laughs> that's it. Um, if only, right? Because now, <laughs> now you got to go play all this music. <laughs> I know. I was talking about that before because it was this, this record, was as we spoke earlier, was unlike any other. I made I have four albums out, and this was my fifth and the first one that I produced, and I built the studio. And if I knew what I was getting into... Before I uh, I did it, I don't think I really would have done it. No, it was I, so it was so not at least not this way. But it yeah, was yeah. it was a long haul. But I'm glad it's over. Well, let's let's get into that for a second. Let's talk about yeah. what was the impetus behind because you didn't just produce everything. I mean, you like picked up. You went to a, a house on the Jersey Shore. That's like, it's right. a whole thing. So That's tell right. me the story behind it. Why, why did you feel this was the way this record needed to well, happen? Well, I had when I first I grew up in New York City. I, thank you very much. I was born and raised here. I grew up playing clubs. And then I got signed at an early age. I was like 18, 19. I was in college. Fast forward, I made four records. And this was the first moment I was free of all my legal commitments, the label deals, the publishing deals. And then I, was, I knew I had to make my fifth record. And I'm like, and, and technology changed so much. Yeah. The business changed so much. I got caught, caught in the highs and the lows of the business the big machinery working, the big machinery kind of keeping you in a creative prison. I really had like a good 12 years of practice rounds. And I was like, all right, now how do I want to do this one? And then I thought it was a good chance to just build from the ground up and, and have control. And I worked with a lot of great producers over the years, so I learned so much through them. And, uh, and they, were, they were good guides for me for, for this record. For sure. And so why Jersey Shore? You're, you've been in New York your whole life. <laughs> you got to escape. What, what, what made you look at the map and go, there? There's good Italian food on the Jersey Shore, no by doubt. the way. Very good. <laughs> but uh, I grew up as a kid going to the Jersey Shore during the summer. Yeah. So we spent a lot of summers there. And there's this old house. It's a centennial house that I grew up going to. And I hadn't really been there in maybe 15 years. Uh, and I just, I don't know. I thought I was ready to, for a change. I was ready to give up my apartment. Plus, the neighbors in New York are a nightmare with a, with a grand piano and a keyboard. It's like, it's, you know, I, I work in the night. I work throughout the night. So I had tons of uh, incidents with my neighbors, understandably. But I figured, you know, I let me gonna, get the hell out of here. It's funny you said understandably because you were like, the neighbors were a nightmare. I couldn't play my giant <laughs> exactly. piano or my keyboard. Therefore, it's like, yeah, how it's, dare they stop me at 3 in the morning? No, it was horrible. Um, so you said it's a house that you used to go to when you were a kid. Is it That's the exact right. house? That's exact pretty amazing. House, exact house. Yeah. So does that location, how does that impact when it comes time to, to write the music? Are, are you? And that's a great question. I was sat, I made the studio hub in the room where my uncle Matty used to sit in a chair. I have so many, every room in this house, particularly because I hadn't been there in so long, would hit me with a different memory. So... You know, there are songs that I wrote that I actually forgot I wrote and I rediscovered and I put on this record. And even the concept of the record, um, being long way from home, there's a lot of ways to read that. And there was no better place to really make this record in this house. But yeah, I was constantly hit with memories and that affected the songwriting process in, in a big way. For sure. I was reading uh, somewhere that some of the songs you would... Uh kind of like write while you were falling asleep or come <laughs> to you while you were falling asleep and then is, had that ever happened to you before in your life or was that it, all unique to this spot? It, was weird. it wasn't exactly that as much as, as like a dream thing. There was something about being isolated. There was something about um, really just having the full control and then something started to happen subliminally. I would literally some of the songs on this record, the songs were in the dreams. So I'd have a dream of like there's a song called Palermo literally the chorus was in the dream so i would wake up and i i would still be close to it you know that that feeling where like before it fades away but now with the studio there i was able to record it instantly in the past you call sony studios you call avatar studios you got to schedule this you schedule the, the guitars the this it's a process so the distance between the idea and the product is very long usually uh, and here it wasn't. It was very close together. It's pretty. Uh, Prince famously had all of his ranch like wired for sound. There's a. Is that great, right? Yeah. There's a great. Uh, I think Kevin Smith tells a story of years ago that he went up there to do like a documentary for him, and he said he found out that everything on the ranch was wired for sound. Wow. So dangerous. He, yeah. If he's like 
taking a shower at 2.30 in the morning. He's got a new version oh of Raspberry Oh, my God. Hey, drop it down. <laughs> like it's That's pretty, pretty awesome. It's pretty nuts. That yeah, is so crazy. There's something to be said about having that uh, immediacy, that, that tangible, like, it's right there. I can go and I can jump right into Big the part of it, yeah. And also technology allows that to happen. So yeah. the ideas are instantaneous. Also, they don't get diluted by other things in between the ideas. So, like... You know, there's something about that moment of inspiration. Recording it during that moment is very different than having the song, writing the song, rehearsing the song, yeah. having the band, and then by the time you get to the studio, it, it's, it's a different thing. There's pros and cons of both, but I really enjoyed this. For sure. And you, um, so you were writing, producing, doing the whole thing. And I asked this of uh, any musician that comes through here that's recently, like, produced their own stuff or worked on it. And I think I know the answer, because you said about three years, but how do you know when something's done, when you're the creative driving force, when you don't have that other voice on the other side going, maybe yeah, we don't do this, maybe we don't do that, you it's know? It's a great question. It's a double-edged sword. Um, there's a great benefit to having a partner and collaborators and a team. And um, at the same time, there's always that moment where something in you, if you're, if you're in touch with it, says it's done. Having said that, there's a great saying that it's never done. It's just when, when you have to release it, you know, and you hit that point where it's like, you know, I still hear things. I'm like, oh, damn, I could have had the background vocals be a little this way or that way. But uh, it just, you just reach that point when you, you, you know it's done. I think. Were, were you excited since this was your first time sort of like uh, with complete creative freedom and you're producing it yourself? Were you excited to sort of mess around and experiment with different ways of capturing the sound Very itself? much. Yeah. I never had it. Uh, another great question. Jesus, Thank you're you. really hell of a hell of a... Thank you, man. <laughs> no, and it's a pleasure to talk about this kind of stuff because when you know a lot of times when you do interviews, it's, you know, it's when did you start minutes. playing? Exactly. And they don't, and you've been like slaving over a certain thing and it's nice to get in depth because there's no one you talk to about it, particularly when you make a record this way. Well, Having we said that, I forgot the question that you already. Put in the work. Well, the work was, <laughs> Which was uh, this was your first time with Creative Freedom, so were you excited to oh, yeah, play with uh, capturing the sound? Yeah, yeah, for and, sure. And, yeah. Well, now, exactly. So the, having access to, like, a million sounds on, for any kind of variety started to change the lyrics, started to change the melody. I would suddenly have like a drum beat influence a concept, lyrical concept, which I never had before. Yeah. Or a synth sound would inspire a melody that I never had before because everything's at your, in your hands now. But having said that, it took a good year and a half to get into that creative flow because I'm like, you know, how does the mic work? And then you, you yeah. work into the, you, you get into these hurdles of electronics, which are just the worst, and then you lose the inspiration. <laughs> so I went through about a good year of that. Yeah, that's just it, right? Like with so many different options, Options, you can have an idea suddenly become fuzzier and fuzzier as you just start tweaking oh, the, the worst. idea, and you can. And they're different parts of the brain. Exactly, they kind of have to like turn on and off. Exactly, and I'd say by the last year, I got comfortable with at least the way I figured out how to work, where I could have an idea and then kind of not get held up by those technological barriers. Talk to me about uh, the uh, the the. Not like the mission statement, but the idea that you want to bring this style of piano on this particular record, sort of the uh, percussive, active, very like syncopated sort of stuff. Yeah. What Was that from day one, that's what you wanted this record to be? Or did that just start coming to you organically as well? You know, I did this, I did this collaboration that was a very random story with David Guetta in France. And I played on a, a French TV show that he had heard me cover one of his songs. And I did my single at the time in France, which was on the charts over there, and they wanted me to cover, you know, like a Billy Joel song or something. And I'm like, I didn't really want to do that, and I want to do something that was current and on the charts. So I took a David Guetta song, and I just reinvented that. And I started putting all these piano breaks in the context of this EDM hmm. track. So then he sees it, and then he texts me, or he, he uh, Facebooks me, and we get in touch, and we end up collaborating. And I'd say that, to isolate it, that was the first seed of, of this record. That had to be maybe five years ago, wow. uh, maybe longer. Uh, and I, my, my brain is all shuffled up. And, and I was like, all right, there's, there's a hole here in, in the business. I turn on the radio, I hear a ton of things that I love musically, and the piano's nowhere to be seen. And there are these songs that could be like having the, the hooks with full of piano. Yeah. So it was very inspirational to me to figure out how to bring piano in, into the modern uh, world, and uh, this is a kind of a first step towards that. 
for sure. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I, I got to hear about uh, 75, 90% of the record and oh, uh, cool. Long Way From Home, uh, which was one of, like, one of the early singles that exactly, you released. Exactly, yeah. That is a very clear, like, the best case, like, scenario of that, where, like, the hook is all about that piano. That's like, it for hits sure. Right and that's, away. And that, that's something that I'd love people to, like, remix and, and yeah. put oh, into oh, tons of worlds. Sure. So, yeah, certain songs come closer to this concept, others not so much. But, yeah, that was why it's the title and why it's a center track. Do you ever? You are a uh, ridiculously talented pianist. You've been playing since Thank you. you could freaking walk, from what I understand, like <laughs> from day one. Have you ever composed anything though, or put anything down on a record that, when it came time to play it live, you were like, "Oh crap, I gotta." Oh, yeah, all the time, <laughs> all the time. And now. I went through a lot of those rounds, and I knew making this record that all right, I'm gonna at some point I'm gonna have to play it and tour it. I wanted to find a way to build pockets of. Uh, openings like openings within the song because sometimes you could write a song and then, and then you, you're screwed live or it, like the, the magic in the studio is not there right. so I wanted to try my best to build in song build in moments where I can expand them and close them live and have not be afraid of where it can go live but yeah that was definitely a conscious switch because my fourth album the one before this had very limited moments of that where like I couldn't I wanted to play but I couldn't so I had a little bit of that. You find yourself in a position now, where since you didn't plan for that, you're trying to reverse engineer it and fold those like moments into the live exactly. set. Exactly. Well, it's like a skeleton. You're yeah. going gonna to put the pieces in place so you can then, on the road, open and close it. But it's a working mechanism of a song. For sure. Um, we're gonna In just a second, we're going to turn it over to audience Q&A. But a couple of things. One, um, Cutting Room, uh, you're playing yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday night. night if, if you right? guys are here, I'm Which playing pretty, at the Cutting Room. Please pretty come. Awesome. Yeah, uh, that's got, happening. The record is in two days, the 13th, Long Way From Home. Where are you? And you happen to be playing, uh, where are you playing that night when it comes out? Oh, yeah, I'm in Mem Memphis. Memphis. Anybody right? listening from Memphis, I'm at yeah. the Halloran Center Friday night, day release. Which is pretty um, cool. And they could check my website for all the official dates. You got I'm all the stuff up Europe there. quite a bit. Follow me on Instagram. You'll get the moment-to-moment -moment updates yeah, and uh, Looks like a you're lot of be touring. Very busy. Very, I, very well, busy. yeah. Which is a good thing. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. It's a good thing, man. You got a ton of dates up there. You got to get it out there. It's amazing. Yeah. I have one last question before we turn it over to the audience, which I was very much intrigued by. Uh, you did. Um, we'll pick those up. That's you cool. did uh, um, the the pledge music. Uh, yeah. experience and one of the the giveaways or what not giveaways and one of the things on pledge music was a jar of, of your <laughs> famous sauce of, so of funny uh, i was sauce uh, like <laughs> what is the story with the sauce man the sauce is uh, much better than the album you got to get the sauce <laughs> yeah that's what you should be promoting that's You're, it forget that this, this was all this route, is guys. a gateway to the sauce sauce if we can. exact i was in italy last week and we did a lot of promo there and that's a country that kind of supports me no matter where i am uh, on the charts or off the charts here in America, and all last week, that's all they need to hear that I had a sauce. And the whole, every, every, every interview Italy, the is then they're, they're talking about recipes. They're saying, but how do you do? And I'm like, oh shit, what did I do? <laughs> Oh, but anyway, you don't have to get into the, the nitty gritty. But bottom line, I imagine it's a sauce from your family or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, my my uncle, like yeah. uh, I came from an Italian New York family, a lot of cooking, uh, a lot of opinions on how to make sauce. And my uncle taught me a particular way that I've kind of modified and tweaked through the years. So, yeah, it's just it's a big source see. of pride. There are all these things that you usually see, like on a play music <laughs> page of like, oh, backstage. Oh, he's going to do this for an hour. He's going to do this to hang out with you. Get to exactly. see this show. And it's like, here's a jar of sauce that I made <laughs> custom. And Nothing just, about this was. Out, by the Conventional. way. All of them gone. I know, they're gone, yeah. People love the sauce. Something oh. to consider. Exactly. There you we never, go. You never know. We've got some uh, audience questions. Mike's Please, in the room. Yeah. We're going to start with our first one right here. Hey, Peter. Hey, uh, how you doing? Congrats on the new record. Thank um, you. I was wondering, um, since you said you got to work with uh, David Guetta, are there like any other artists that you wanted to work with? And um, I also wanted to mention, uh, I know you were on House of Cards a few yeah, years yeah. back. <laughs> you did a duet with Kevin Spacey. Oh, I just want to know what that experience was like. Well, the, the Kevin Spacey thing, the House of Cards, was a lot of fun. I mean, I went to this the, their set, which was fascinating. The replica of the White House was pretty amazing. And it was a pleasure to be included in that show. I know him for many years now. He came to one of my first shows when I started in London and a big music lover and supporter of mine. So we had a good time filming that. We sang that song maybe like 23 times. Wow, really? And they kept pretty much the majority of the take. Uh, so it was it was natural in a, in a way uh, and a lot of fun. And the other part, what was what, what was the other question? Were there any other artists you wanted to work? Oh with? yeah, other yeah. Collaborations. I, I'm interested. Well, first of all, these things like the David Guetta thing happen naturally. You know, it, it, you can't plan this kind of thing. Um, and I I'm interested in collaborations like that that come from some sort of organic. Uh, 
inst instant, uh, but instance, but uh, I think people within the EDM world, people even in the hip hop world, the areas of music that I don't see the piano being really active are the places that inspire me. That I'll be like, because I hear things on like, a, you know, a Dr. Dre track that that I hear where like there's a there's music there's enough musicality in the bed of of the beat that it's ripe for so much uh, piano presence. So that kind of thing uh, really inspires me. How did the uh, the House of Cards thing happen? Did uh, since he knew they, yeah, they just they called us simple yeah they just called us. I don't even Honestly. think Kevin knew about it to be honest yeah. with you. But um, but yeah, that just happened. That's pretty yeah, it was a pretty cool moment, I imagine. That was. That was uh, we've got time for a few more. Our next question is going to come from right here. Hi, oh, Peter. Hi. Uh, I really love your cover art. I was wondering if you could oh. talk about the composition and what made you choose that image. Well, a friend of mine. I'll tell you exactly how that happened. I was on the beach, which is very club block away from where this house was, where the studio was, a beach I grew up going to for for many years. And a cousin of mine took a shot of her. I had it. Just something bubbling in my head. I didn't know what the visual was going to be yet. But um, my cousin th Vicky, I took a shot of my cousin Vicky, and there was something about the way the sun set, and she became this silhouette that I saw this shot of her, and I, I, uh, I knew that I needed, that was like my, that was what I wanted for the cover. So I then had my other friend, Mark, come take some photos, and uh, we kind of, you know, once I had that template in my mind, we just we just made it. I must have messed around with this for a while on on one of those apps, and then I had uh, somebody make it look a little uh, better. <laughs> is this the one from your phone? Like, um, ninety percent. Ninety percent. Yeah. I forgot to ask you, how did the family feel about you taking over the house? Uh, I have a. Oh, well, they weren't going there anyway. It was fair empty. enough. Yeah, okay, it was a, it was then. it was free for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I believe I'm getting one more question. We've got one more question. It's going to be right here. Hey, hey, Thanks how you doing? Being here. Uh, yes. Thank you. How would you define a great song, whether it be yours or somebody else's? It's. I mean, I'd, I'd say it's got to make you feel something. I mean, at the end of the day, art and entertainment. You know, it's a, it's a form of escape, film, music, any 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 form. So I think that if it if it hits you, if it cuts through, that's the that's the bottom line. That's the only thing that's important. Having said that, I have a million rules that I that I kill myself to try and uh, abide by. Lyrically, musically, there is such a thing as good and bad, uh, and I that's really the only two genres of music that I personally uh, consider good and bad. Um, so, but having said that, if, if 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 you like some crap song, you know, God bless you, then then the art is working. Uh, at the end of the day, so it depends how you look at it. How do the how do the rules work? Do you have them like on a whiteboard? You, like, write a song and then <laughs> me, go. And then, yep, I got that. For one. me I got personally, one like I love a lot of the songwriters, like the classic songwriters, everyone from Paul Simon to Bob Dylan to people where if you just read, particularly lyrically, I mean, you listen to the Beach Boys and those melodies that are like, oh come on, you're gonna compare that melody to this melody? Like that's where I say there's a sense of there's a sense of good and better. So there is a ranking in my own personal brain yeah. lyrically the same way there's laziness and rhyming that you see every day nowadays i hear hit songs that could be everybody could be jumping up and down the same way but that lyric could be a little better yeah. like that can be a better lyric but it really just depends on how you hear things it's very personal do you think uh or these high st like these standards that you have were they something you developed over time having d done this for so long yeah very much my my third it goes really back to my early Early uh, playing in New York, playing, learning a lot of the old songs that have been around for a hundred years by the great writers, and then um, you know making those first early records, my first two records, and then my third record was my first of all original material, and I worked with an amazing lyricist, John Bettis, who opened up a huge door for me, and uh, I have two theater projects in the works, so like. And that's a huge uh, focus on lyrics and storytelling. And uh, so I try and come, on this record, I feel like I've, I've drawn from a lot of those inspirations and influences. But yeah, it went back a long time. For sure. Uh, last question, and then we're going to yeah. get off stage, let them set up so you can do your thing, man. But um, sure. I, I like to think, uh, and it seems to be the case with every project, um, no matter what kind of artist you are, but especially if you're a musician, every record you make, there's something you learn that you take with you to the next one. This was such a unique process, so many things that you'd never done before, so many new ways you've done it. What's something, as you get ready or enter the, the world of record number six, what's something you think <laughs> oh you're going to bring with you from this process? <laughs> 
nothing will be done ever again quite like this record. There are things I will never do again just because it's, uh, you know, I'm not going to take, you know, 10 years to make a record. This was, this was, there are things I learned from this record from a production standpoint that were yeah. so eye-opening. Eye but I think, for me personally, the technicality, the, the electronic... Um, laborious work that comes along with stuff is stuff. The, all those little remaining moments of the barriers we talked about before, I want to just, I now know what they are, for me at least, and I want to remove them for the next record. And then I want to keep some of them, the ones that have informed me on, wow, without that horrible day, yeah. I would never have gotten that lyric. So there are certain valuable things. Uh, but I'm, I'm definitely going to, you know, have a team for sure. around me. I, I just, it's... <laughs> Yeah, for sure. It's too much. Sure. I think finding the balance uh, it, yeah. is part of the fun. Exactly. It's figuring it out and learning. Exactly. Well, uh, Peter, I learned a lot from again, this. man. Uh, the the record you. is killer. I'm so excited for you. Excited Thank for you so much. 13th, two days from today, uh, it drops. It's going to be available everywhere. Yeah, Music's everywhere. Available, yeah. man. Get there and listen to it. Uh, stick around. Don't go anywhere because coming up next, Peter Sincati is going to play for us, everybody. Make some noise. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.